okay, we are just backing up very gently. It probably would have been okay, but you've only got to find one bridge that's a little bit lower than you thought, and you could be in all sorts of trouble. That was a really nice little place to stop. Hello, doggy. I think I like starting later in the day because it's a lot warmer and it's not really cold in the mornings. He's barking in French. It's not that cold in the mornings, but it's colder. So starting at two o'clock like I did today makes it super pleasurable. I'm a few minutes early, so I'm just going to sit tight, just, um, just short of the lock. Uh, it's a bit rude to just go in. I'm just tied up here, which is uh, just a little break for lunch. But one thing you've got to do, and I almost forgot, is throw the line out first before you jump off the boat. Because one day you won't do that. You'll jump off the boat, and as you jump off the boat, you'll kind of push it a little bit, and it'll drift away from you. So always throw the line out first so you've got something to grab onto after you've jumped off. There is our next lock, just there. We are right on time. because I set a large goal for myself. I wanted to do at least 35 kilometers today. And it's just me on the boat, so there's a lot of work to be done um, and keeping going. And like nine locks as well. So I'm trying to film and listen to the radio to keep up with the friggin' news about the Ukraine situation. So what with like trying to deal with all the locks, trying to listen to the news, trying to film everything, as well as not crash the boat into stuff, is a little stressful. I did manage to lose one fender today. As I was leaving a lock back there, a little gust of wind kicked the back end of the boat around and one of the fenders just got squished in between the boat and the key, which it's supposed to, but there was a sharp bit of metal on the, on the lock, and... Uh... Those animals, the immune response is less and less and less they their stress.
grab these things, it's best to just go around once because if you go around twice and the boat goes down, sometimes it'll tie up on itself and it'll pull tight and it'll leave the boat hanging and that, that'll just be really ugly very fast. If you've got a really new boat, make sure you've got about 50 fenders on each side because you're gonna bump into stuff, you just are. This is not a new boat, so it's gonna have a few scratches on it by the time I get down to the Mediterranean, but eh, I don't care. So it's four kilometers to the next one, and then a little bit further, and I'm probably gonna stop for the day. also getting a, a whole automatic system put in and they've got like new steps and a nice little new hut for the uh, for the lock keeper and new machinery you can see like there and there because a lot of these locks are very very old like a hundred years old so they're having a good old uh, good old upgrade right now it's so weird listening to the radio and the news that's coming from Ukraine right now um, because it's so it's so amazingly peaceful here and I'm sure this countryside looks pretty much what Ukraine looks like, you know? And, uh, and then in the evenings when I get back on the computer and you check out the news, it's like, holy shit. Because people are just, they're just dying. There, there's missiles landing on their houses. And uh, it's not right. I've done what I can do. I mean, I've just donated a bit of cash, but it's it's not enough. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not good. Not good at all. Like, is it relatively straightforward? There were reports earlier of people having to queue for maybe up to two days to get into Poland. The United Nations says the number. No, this I'm moored quite nicely actually. A little close to the road, but that's okay because all I'm doing here is shopping there. I gotta go buy some supplies. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm just gonna move a little further downstream and and moor up for the night. So I'm gonna leave my boat parked by the roadside and do a little shopping. reason Google hasn't got a clue where I am not on my phone not on my computer it's putting me in a field somewhere miles away so that's no help um, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna moor up for the night could be anywhere I think we're there that's where I'm aiming and I'm about 300 meters short of it, so that was a good day. Slightly stressful, but a good day. Here we are at a lovely, lovely spot to, to stop. However, 
it does not have the power that it said it did. <laughs> it has a really old French barge thing just here, but nowhere to plug in. And I have a lot of gadgets that need power. So I can charge off solar to a point, but it, it's annoying when it says it's got power and you go past places that have power to get to a place that doesn't have power. When you're doing any traveling, if you are trying to do what I'm trying to do, it requires a lot of gadgets and gadgets need charging. And the one thing, the one thing that matters, it's pathetic, but it's electricity. I was planning on staying here several days, but I'll probably just move on tomorrow because if I don't have power, there's no point in staying. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning here in, I don't know, I can't remember the name of this place. It's a bit tricky to pronounce, but uh, I thought it was going to be power, but there is no power. Um, I mean, there's power there in my little generator, but uh, today, we are going to move the boat only about 20 kilometers. We are going to, uh, we're going to go to Nevers, which is uh, that way and then that way. Nice little town. Um, the marina is quite close to the center of town and looks, looks nice. I'm probably gonna stay there for I don't know, three or four days. Oh, someone up there working already. It's very early. It's like 7.30 in the morning. My neighbor is just starting his boat up. This is actually a really nice little mooring spot. Um, and it does have power. I didn't think it did because it was hidden away. It's kind of up, uh, up there and the boat's there. So I didn't spot the power in time. So I did use the generator, but it worked out okay, but now I know where the power is, and so do you. It's kind of funny, in the middle of this really quaint little French town, we have this rather garish art piece. And it blends in so nicely with the, uh, the local scenery, don't you think? It's about eight o'clock in the morning on Saturday, it's a bit wet. And the power just went off, which is a little strange because I wasn't really drawing that much power, but it went off anyway. So I'm going to try and investigate. That's one connection there going to the boat. I wrapped it up in a plastic bag so the water didn't get to it. Same here. And this is my power supply here. Seems to have welded itself inside. It looks like the main breaker might have popped, which is bad. Damn it. I just need to troubleshoot a bit and find out if there's power coming out of here. Which is a different connector. I do have the adapter, but it's not gonna fit with the boat down here so I'm gonna drag the boat up there a little bit so that I can use a different cable I hate these flat screws I don't know why people use flat screws I've made the classic mistake. <laughs> I gotta thread it through here before I connect it up. Whatever. At least I know all the connections are good now. This is actually better because this little crimping thing is now actually crimping. Now I am not an electrician, but this, to be honest, is more of a 
a mechanical thing because I'm just connecting things up. I would not want to, to dig into the boat's electrics to to really fix anything unless it was an emergency because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Things and now it's not tripping, so I've got power back. I just need to wire things safely, and that works. But there's a little light that I have on in the boat that means I don't have to walk back to the boat to see if the power worked. And again, this might seem silly, but I'd like to thank Larry Harvey again because in the past, if this had happened, I'd have just freaked out and been like, ah, I can't fix it, I can't fix it. I don't know what to do, help. Whereas now, because I've been to Burning Man like 18 times in a row, sometimes you just have to fix yourself. Some, <laughs> you do that as well. But sometimes you just have to fix what isn't working because there's no other option. It's either got to work or you're just... And just because I don't like having only one line connected to the boat. I'm gonna put another one out. And it only took me an hour and 15 minutes to fix. It's an hour and a half, but it took me 15 minutes to decide to actually bother to do it instead of just starting the generator. And I did think, well, time for a cocktail because I fixed it. And then I remembered it's 9.30 in the morning. So no cocktails for me. And literally five minutes after completing my task, it started to pour with rain. So that was good. So I need to go get some, some bread, a baguette, because I'm out. But it's pouring. There's my little boat. Now I gotta go find a baguette. And the, the VNF people are so cool. Um, I, I was just walking out to get the uh, baguette and it's closed and um, my, my little friendly uh, guy from VNF, Thierry, um, just drove up and he's like, I'm just coming to see how things are and uh, find out when you want to move. So we just chatted for a few moments and uh, figured out that 11 o'clock on Tuesday would be the best time to arrive at the lock. I am really glad that I put this cover on yesterday instead of forgetting about it and then waking up it being raining and then having to put the thing on in the rain because I've done that and it's not that much fun. And I've also decided to treat myself to a pizza. Ready? Pizza. It's not bad. For a machine standing in the middle of a French village, I'd give that an eight. Good morning! It is a beautiful sunny morning um, after a couple of days of eh, rain, cold. <laughs> um, so this morning we will be moving about four kilometers up that way and then another six to a bigger lock and then there's a little place that I might stay or if it's early enough I might just keep going and see how far I can get um, but there's no hurry so uh, that's that. I was all excited this morning because there's a bakery just up there. It's closed still. Ah! I don't know why it's closed. I was looking forward to a nice baguette this morning, but alas, soup. But soup for breakfast is all right. It's been a nice little place to stay. Um, it's quite pretty. I am going to be fitter by this summer.
So I'm drinking a strawberry and banana smoothie for lunch. And although I don't really walk that far, I do try and get myself off the boat every now and again and wander around the countryside because alongside the canals, it's pretty flat. So that's kind of easy, but uh, it's very pretty. It's very nice. And I just, you got to keep moving. You got to do something every day. You got to just get a little bit of blood circulating. Well, this is a little odd. I woke up this morning and the whole boat is covered in like mud rain. The whole boat is brown right now. Don't know why it is, but that's how it is. Everything's just got this, like this brown on. And the whole sky just has this sort of brownish hue to it. Very, very strange. I've never seen a mud rain before. Everything's got a kind of orange cast to it. But I need to go and see if I can buy a baguette or two before we move on. It does look like they're open because there is a light on in the window. Oh. They are warm, freshly baked, and wonderful. This is not like bread. This is like, ah, uh, I don't know, I can't explain it. It sounds silly that I'm raving about it so much, but I'm telling you, in the morning, these for breakfast are the best. And probably came out of the oven about 30 minutes ago. So after opening it up, you, spread copious quantities of cream cheese, fresh ham, a little sriracha, pepper, a little salt. <clears throat> and right on time, my VNF pal Thierry pops up and opens the lock. Apparently this, um, this brown, cloud that's over us is uh, the wind that comes up from the Sahara. Um, it probably has a nice French name, but I don't know what it is. I will investigate. I think the next lock's a bit more complicated. It's like two locks back to back. always look lower from a distance when you're about 200 meters away from them you're like oh no it's a really low one and then as you come up to it you're like no it's okay and you always freak out a little bit as well you're always like ah yeah. but then then you you go right under it and it's not a problem but <laughs> I don't know if you can see but right ahead there right here it's calm but up there there's a bit of wind and I do not like the wind when you are approaching these locks because you just got to get one little gust that takes you sideways and you're in all sorts of trouble. And we don't like trouble. Okay, we have a green. This is actually in, it's two locks together, so it's like a little staircase. And the reason I wore a life jacket today was because I knew this was a very big lock. It's just a little bit safer. Even though there's two of us here, you just want to be extra safe.
those weird pressure waves again. I mean, that's a good 200 meters in front of the boat. But there's this little wave goes ahead of the boat. It's weird. Uh, we do have a slight excursion here. Um, I'm going to go left to Nevers um, because I just want to buy some supplies. There's like a, a rope hanging over the river. Can you see it? It's working. Okay, the lock is now filling up. You can see just there. And it's filled up and the gate is opening, so that's cool. And we're going to go down, so I'm not even going to bother to tie off because it won't be that dramatic. Well, this lock is more, it's not really automatic, it's sort of self-service. Um, when you arrive, there's a thing over there and you, um, you pull on it and that tells the lock to start operating. And then when you get the green signal from the lock, hang on, you, uh, you move in and then you pull that thing there, the blue one, or actually you lift, you lift it up. And then that starts the inside of the lock operating. And when, when the gates open here, you can go through. And I have a feeling that the, the self-service locks are a little gentler on the motion because there's no one else around to take over if things go wrong. So the, the sluices open a little bit less so the water doesn't like rush out or rush in. Uh, just sensible. arriving at the lovely French town of Nevers. Another low bridge. Successfully navigated. I'm not actually sure where I'm supposed to go. So over there looks like my kind of boat. So I'm just gonna go over there and see what happens. And even if I say so myself, I did a damned, damned good job mooring here. That was uh, very smooth. No bumps, no nothing. I mean, it was kind of easy, but there is a bit of a wind blowing and it just slid right in. So, and my Starlink dish here has just positioned itself so that it's working. It's funny, you see these places on maps, on Google and whatever, and then you, you show up and it's pretty much, pretty much how it looked like, but it's a little odd. I don't know. I don't know why it feels strange, but it does. So there. <laughs>